Hello everyone, Pam here again in the second video on deep links in Android apps focusing primarily on the hacking part of it. By now you should know these links will direct users to access specific sections or functions within an application. This includes web views and the goal is to ease navigation which in turn enhances usability and in terms are used to perform this redirect. Universal links are the equivalent in the iOS apps. Having shared this paper before, measuring the insecurity of mobile deep links of Android by Liu and company from Gangwang Department of Computer Science, which I believe you took your time to read, I find it resourceful here and demonstrating what deep links are in summary. There are three formats of deep links as shown, scheme URLs first ones ever since 2008, app links introduced in 2015, and intent URLs in 2013. As you already know, scheme URLs is the most insecure of the three. App links use HTTP or HTTPS as schemes, while scheme URLs use custom ones. Again, we talked about this in detail in our first video on this topic. There may arise various bugs from improper deep link implementation in Android, but these are the main ones. The most common is improper scheme validation, which can open the door to a whole lot of other bugs. The recent one being CVE 2023-21514. Another one is link hijacking that can lead to session hijacking, which in turn can lead to account takeovers depending on the sensitivity of the endpoint in question. This is possible if sensitive data such as access tokens, session cookies is exposed. There is also a possibility of open redirects and XSS injection in web views that could escalate into a remote code execution. The remedy in all this is always to verify the viable option is to use app links, but you have to verify its associated asset links to JSON file that must be included in the application's web server described by the web URL intent filter. You must also add Android Auto Verify and set it to true. And as usual, app links use either HTTP or HTTPS as schemes. The diagram shown shows how app link verification occurs. If you app for example, wants to register foo.com URLs, the mobile OS will contact server at foo.com for verification. If the developer set up the asset links to the JSON file correctly, as it should be at the root directory of foo.com server, then the OS will find and confirm foo.com URLs associated with the app together with its SHA-256 fingerprint, and this will prevent link hijacking again when correctly implemented. Because sometimes asset links to the JSON file gets misconfigured with a mistyped associated URLs, which deems the whole process pointless. Finally, make sure you do not add code secret values inside an application. Instead, have them communicated to the app by remote backend server over a secure transmission protocol. Key point here being a secure transmission protocol, because if not, the secret could still leak. Now, enough of theoretical talk here. Now let's get our hands dirty into practical hacking of deep links in Android apps. This might not be related to deep links, but I want us to start with um, exfiltrating a user credentials when they log in. As we've already seen, we can force the user to log out and we wait for them to log in and harvest the credentials. So the first step we are going to do is uh, log out uh, we are just going to emulate uh, an adversary, forces the user to log out, and then uh, override uh, the login URL, and then wait for the user to log in and uh, harvest credentials. So let's do just that. Start ngrock. Let's start ngrock. HTTP. Okay. Copy this link then log out from the application then let's overwrite uh, the login URL just paste the ngrock uh, link here enter okay we are going to monitor on the ngrock as we log in okay so let's log in uh, let me use uh, pem at pem7.com okay. then welcome okay. as as 
at the moment you can see we don't have any request but when we click i expect uh, to get a post request so let's log in and as you can see we have a post request here so uh, for us to check our logs the server logs we have to go to this uh, our local interface check the logs there and we expect to find the credentials okay so let's just do that ah, it's even already there so as you can see we have only one request that we made uh, which is two minutes ago and um, you can see it was a post request and we have uh, the credentials here we have the email and we have the password